somewhere between this life and the next, lost in time and far away from the reaches of gods and devils, stands a tree. It is a tree of immense beauty. Rising from the soil, magnificent magenta-colored roots grow up into a resplendent, twisted trunk, whose branches extend into angelic, almost indescribable emerald foliage. And yet, when looked upon, despite its beauty, this tree evokes an incredible sadness. Sheltered between its leaves grow hearts, but these are not joyous, love-filled hearts. They are mournful, broken hearts. It is said that the tree has grown a broken heart for every tragic love story ever known. Some stories are fleeting, and those hearts grow, then fall from the tree onto the ground below, where they slowly dissolve into the earth, lost forever. The hearts that remain in the tree flourish. They are the hearts belonging to the most devastating, sorrowful, dispiriting tales of love torn asunder. Those hearts are forever broken, but also in bloom, a testament to the macabre beauty they represent. I want to tell you a story. The story I want to tell you is of Michael and Catherine. If you look closely, you might see their final resting place right at the base of the tree. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning. Michael and Catherine met by chance. One night at the corner of Fifth and Arden, Michael and Catherine bumped into each other. Michael was heading home after a long day at work, and Catherine was on her way to the store to pick up some cat food. Such benign, mundane activities. And yet it was those circumstances that set in motion our tale of love and tragedy. As they collided with one another, they momentarily seemed to gather themselves and continue on their journey. But, just as it seemed like the moment had passed, they both turned around to look at one another. Michael, the perfect gentleman, took full responsibility and offered to escort her to her destination. Catherine, a hopeless romantic, was swept up in the magic of the moment and agreed. And so it began. Michael and Catherine shared a connection that many would envy. Even barely knowing each other, they felt an undeniable intimacy with each other. It wasn't long before they were spending every night together, and within six months they were engaged. Three months later they were married and planning their future. Though to some it seemed like a whirlwind of a relationship, and that they maybe might have been rushing into things. Michael and Catherine couldn't be happier. They both finally felt they had found what was missing from their lives. The couple were already in their late thirties and knew that if they wanted to have a family they would need to start right away. Nine months later they welcomed a beautiful baby girl into the world. Emily brought even more joy and love into their lives. It seemed as though nothing could darken the light that surrounded them all. But of course, it is when you have something to lose that true tragedy takes place. It was about two weeks after Emily's second birthday. She was staying with her grandparents on the other side of the city. Michael and Catherine had enjoyed a night to themselves and were just rising the next morning when the doorbell rang. The scream that escaped Catherine's body and the look of sheer terror will forever haunt the policeman standing at the door. He had come to inform them that during the night, Catherine's parents' home had burned to the ground. And no one had survived. The loss of a child takes its toll on everyone. To lose more than one family member at once is too unbearable to imagine. Grief takes hold and sometimes never lets go. 
Catherine fell into an unending depression. She was inconsolable, huddled into a chair, holding tight any object that might retain Emily's scent. Michael was just angry. He raged at the world, tearing anything and everything apart. The love that once filled their home was gone. Two perfectly full hearts now broken. This is not, however, the end of the story. One day, whilst out taking a walk in his third attempt to try and calm down, Michael noticed a book in the store window. It caught his eye as the cover was a picture of an incredibly beautiful tree. Yet despite its beauty, Michael was overcome with sadness. The longer he looked, the further his anger faded, and the greater the grief took hold. He collapsed to his knees, tears streaming down his face. After what seemed like an eternity, Michaels finally stood, went into the store and purchased the book. He began to read as he slowly walked home. The book told the story of a tree, a tree of broken hearts. As he read, Michael became fixated. Though there were many tragic tales within, Michael became obsessed by the tree itself. As he arrived home, he turned right back around and headed straight for the library. He had to know more. Hours and hours passed as Michael sought out everything he could about the tree of broken hearts. He became convinced that when Emily had died, his and Catherine's hearts had torn in two and were now broken halves growing in the tree. He thought perhaps if he could just find the tree and somehow pick the hearts, he could return them to their bodies. Michael ran home to tell Catherine he showed her the books, explained what he'd learned, trying desperately to convince her that he wasn't crazy. But Catherine wasn't listening, her grief still consuming every part of her. But Michael had one last detail to share, a detail he hoped would make her listen. Michael told her that he believed the tree had such exceptional power that if they were able to reclaim their hearts from it, not only would their sadness be gone, but the tree would be able to return Emily to them. The grief-stricken Catherine stared at Michael. In that moment, they were back at the corner of Fifth and Arden. Two souls connected inexplicably, but completely. Catherine spoke for the first time since they had lost Emily with one simple word. Michael wrapped his wife in his arms and softly explained what he had learned. The tree of broken hearts is said to grow in purgatory, a world between this and the next. Many religions proclaimed it to be a place of transition between life, death, and the afterlife. What was clear, though, was the only way to reach it was to die. Catherine and Michael sat looking at each other, they looked into each other's eyes for the longest time, neither speaking a word. As Michael got up silently, walked into the kitchen and returned with two knives, it seemed neither gave such a horrific idea as second thought. Michael handed Catherine one of the knives and moments later blood began to sprawl across the floor. Catherine was the first to open her eyes. This place was unrecognizable, but what was clear was that it was devoid of color. A harsh wind whipped her face and urged her to rise to her feet. As she stood, she saw Michael lying next to her, opening his eyes. She reached out a hand and helped him up. They had made it. Michael's eyes searched wildly. Nothing resembling the tree could be seen. He started to run, searching desperately. Catherine followed, fear starting to seep into her mind. They ran until they couldn't run anymore. Still nothing, just the gray in the wind. Michael cried out into the void. He begged anyone who might be listening to reveal the tree. Catherine reached out and took his hand. 
He turned to look at her. Tears were rolling down both their faces. They had failed. They had sacrificed everything for nothing. Michael's head dropped and his eyes fell upon the ground. A glimmer of color flashed amid the gray. He felt a tear fall from his cheek and watched it create a magenta spark as it hit the ground. He collapsed to the floor and frantically started to sift through the earth with his hands. It was a tree root, a magnificent, magenta tree root. He looked up at Catherine, who fell to her knees and helped him move the earth. They cleared away soil, seeking the source of the tree roots. For what seemed like hours, they followed them until finally, far in the distance, they saw it. The emerald leaves glowing like a beacon amongst the they ran towards the tree, glancing at each other as they drew closer and closer. For the first time since Emily had gone, the glimmer of hope returned to them. Out of breath, they collapsed onto the grass, against the trunk of the tree, gasping for air. Michael's hand gripped Catherine's as their breathing returned to normal. They stood once more to take in the tree. It was just as beautiful as Michael had read. He and Catherine stared up into the branches, into the broken hearts, hoping they might find something recognizable. It was Catherine who first noticed that there was writing on the hearts. She pointed at one of the hearts not too far up the tree, and Michael started to climb. As he reached the heart, he read names. Excited, he began to climb further, investigating every heart to find his and Catherine's name. Heart after heart, he searched, his hope fading with each disappointment. As he arrived at the final heart in the tree, he felt his heart break all over again. It wasn't there. Climbing down to Catherine, he sobbed as they embraced. I, I, I don't understand, he cried. Where are my hearts? Michael and Catherine sat down again at the foot of the tree. Michael began to trace circles in the earth with his fingers. Suddenly, he withdrew his hand as blood flowed from his finger, and Catherine carefully cleared away the soil. There, partially dissolved into the earth, was half of a heart, and clearly visible on its faded surface was a name. Michael. Michael and Catherine never left the foot of the tree. It is said that on finding that their story was not worthy of a permanent place in the tree, their flesh began to dissolve into the earth like their hearts. And yet, even though their hearts do not forever bloom within its branches, their story will live forever as their bones lay at peace at the foot of the tree of broken.